So Python is the, I would say the easiest language to learn and to begin with. So number one at the top, I guess you might have guessed it already. Hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Gaurav and welcome to 100 GB where I talk about uh, software engineering, technology and stuff I care about. So today I'm going to be talking about the top programming languages in 2021. Well, according to me, uh, the GitHub and the World Wide Web. So let's start with why this video. There are two reasons for it. First reason is uh, that I've been getting a lot of questions around what language should I begin with? Uh, should I learn Java? Should I learn C? If I want to become a data scientist, should I learn Kotlin? And second reason is, so when I got these questions, I went up to the internet and uh, searched for all the resources that are available on YouTube and uh, the internet. I came across a couple of articles and videos uh, that were kind of okay, uh, but, they, but they also talk about the salaries offered uh, for every given language, which I'm not sure how they can come up with such figures, which is not possible as in it's very hard to come up with the exact salary amount that you can get if you learn a particular language. That is not possible. And more importantly, I'm not sure if you want to become a good software engineer, it, it is okay for you to like focus on one language. Think of it like this. If you want to become a CTO in a company, do you think language will matter to you? Anyhow, let's begin with the top languages. Uh, on the number seven, we have Dart. Well, Dart is an open source language and uh, it is actually optimized and structured around writing UIs. Uh, it was developed by Google. Uh, uh, well, these days it's pretty famous just because of Flutter, as in the primary and the secondary use cases, just Flutter. And in case you don't know, Flutter is the most popular cross-platform technology out there right now. And Dart is how you do it. Well, one thing that amuses me about Dart is, it is relatively a new language, uh, but it is still among the top 15 languages uh, in the rank list provided by GitHub for 2021 Q2, uh, which is actually pretty astonishing. So number six, we have Golang. Golang is very famous for its simple and modern structure and still being very fast. Uh, you can think of it like a native alternative to C or C++, well, primarily C. It compiles faster than C++. It provides a decent garbage collector as well. It is simpler than C++ as far as the code is concerned. So again, it was developed by Google in uh, 2009. And since then, it is being used in a lot of uh, high performing web applications. Well, primarily the use cases involved uh, the web applications where some kind of advanced concurrency is required. Uh, because of the concurrency constructs provided by Golang, like Go routines and channels, and a lot of other places where originally C and C++ were being used. So on number five, we have Kotlin. So Kotlin is actually the most versatile language I have ever seen after JavaScript or TypeScript. So you can think of it like an improved version or kind of a syntactical sugar over Java, which it is not because it requires its own compiler and it, it eventually compiles uh, to the Java byte code. And interestingly, it, it is actually interoperable with Java as in, in the same code base, you can have Kotlin and Java and you can call uh, functions and whatnot. It can also be regarded as an advanced or uh, a modern version of Java because it is super safe because of the nullability constructs that it provides. And as far as the use cases are concerned, uh, Kotlin is actually being used everywhere. It started from Android app development. Uh, a lot of companies have been using it on the server side as well. And now that Kotlin multi-platform is coming, sooner or later we will see Kotlin being used for iOS app development and desktop applications as well. So on number four, we have Java, the probably the most famous language here in India and maybe the entire world. Java was kind of the first perfect object-oriented language. It is a lot more secure when compared to C, C++. It actually has a large uh, application base as well, primarily because of the Android apps and a lot of web applications as well. And as far as the use cases are concerned, uh, it is used in areas such as banking services, uh, some scientific applications. And of course we have the uh, Android application development. 
And actually, one of the biggest deployments of Java is the Android operating system, as in the operating system that you are using in your mobile phone if you are using Android. Um, most of it, I'm not sure the exact percentage of it, but uh, all the all the system APIs, basically the system framework is written in Java. And the last but not the least uh, important use case is uh, the server backends. As in a lot of companies are using Java for writing their server backends. Uh, they generally use some kind of uh, like frameworks such as Spring Boot, Hibernate or something else. Yeah, that's that's about it. So on third, we have C, C++. Uh, well, these are two different languages, but in most of the cases, uh, these are like uh, categorized together. These are the most famous languages as in every software engineer is uh, aware of these and actually most of the software engineers start their journey with C. It's, it's again a high level language but kind of uh, I feel it's not very high level language as such. It's highly reliable, secure and uh, and you have that low level power. Power! It's actually one of the oldest programming languages on the planet. And as far as the use cases are concerned, uh, so these languages uh, are used in a lot of forms, uh, mostly where performance is required. Uh, so stuff like writing device drivers or writing the low level libraries in operating systems, in any kind of operating system, be it iOS, uh, Android, Windows, Linux. Apart from all of these, uh, it is also useful in writing games because performance is very critical in games as well. Not actually for writing games, but I would say gaming engines or game engines like Unity, Unreal Engine and others. And last but not the least, uh, it is also used in writing native desktop softwares. So number two, Python. Python, well, I, got, I, I really got excited over here. So Python is the, I would say the easiest language to learn and to begin with. Well, um, I, I won't recommend it for, uh, for people who want to become hardcore software engineers at least not to begin with, uh, but but for people who are not software engineers like data scientists uh, and, and others, Python is a very good language for them to like begin programming and doing some crazy stuff. It is not very performant when compared to C or C++, but the fact that everything is very easy with Python is actually very popular. So interestingly, Python was developed somewhere around 91 or 92, uh, which means it's pretty old. So as far as the application of Python is concerned, the application ranges from like artificial intelligence, machine learning, scientific and numeric applications. And Python is also used by a lot of companies uh, on the server backends as well. Um, all in all, you can do anything in Python. That is the kind of the flexibility that you get along with Python. So number one, at the top, I guess you might have guessed it already. It is JavaScript or and TypeScript. So the first JavaScript engine was created in 95 or 96 uh, as part of the Netscape uh, Navigator. So Netscape Navigator was a very popular browser at that time in case you are not aware of that. So it started as a language using which developers can build uh, advanced features on their websites and and more or less it is still being used in the same way uh, and TypeScript what is TypeScript so TypeScript is uh, kind of a modernized version uh, okay I won't say modernized version it's kind of JavaScript that includes strict type checking as well not not only type checking as in you as in you have the types built into the language and a lot of other things so uh, all in all it is bent towards being an object-oriented programming language. So use cases with JavaScript, it's actually used everywhere, like literally everywhere. And that is actually the beauty of JavaScript or TypeScript. You learn once and you can do anything. If you want to write website front ends, well, yeah, sure, you can do that. If you want to write server back ends, well, yes, you can do that in the form of uh, Node.js. If you want to uh, write a desktop application, well, yes, be my guest use uh, the Electron shell and create any kind of desktop application you want. If you want to make mobile apps, well, yes, you can use React Native and build mobile apps using JavaScript or TypeScript. So possibilities are infinite. And that's the reason it takes the top spot. <laughs> so that was it for the top programming languages. Uh, I have some honorable mentions that actually couldn't make the cut, but uh, they're still worth mentioning. The top three here, uh, one is the SQL. It is not actually a programming language, but it is, it is kind of a 
uh, I would say a language which is used to interact with the database. So if you're a software engineer, somewhere sometime in the future, you would be expected to do some kind of analysis and you would be given some data. And SQL will really help you in that. Uh, then we have HTML, CSS. Uh, again, if you're a software engineer, sometime somewhere in the future, you might have to write some kind of demo or some kind of quick UI, maybe to show some graphical visualization or something. So it's better if you know at least the basics of HTML and CSS. Then we have PHP. Well, PHP was, it is still popular if you see the GitHub trends, but interestingly, I didn't find a single person in my friend circle or in my, uh, in my circle basically, who is actually actively working on PHP. Uh, next we have Swift language. So Swift is the open source uh, language developed by Apple, primarily used for writing iOS applications. So earlier it made my cut as in it was on the seventh position and Dart was on the eighth position. But, and then I saw the GitHub ranking and uh, I actually took it out from the list. Then we have C Sharp. So C, C Sharp again, uh, same case with PHP. It's pretty popular. Uh, but the thing is that I, I couldn't find anybody. There are like two friends who are actually working actively on C Sharp. So it, it is actually a modern language, but the application of the language is pretty limited. As far as the, as far as the application or the use cases are concerned, you can uh, write games, as in games for Windows. You can write server backends, and you can write the desktop applications, and that again for Windows. Then last, we have Rust. So Rust is an open source language, uh, primarily built for speed and memory management. Uh, so the use cases are mostly same uh, as that of C or C++, um, but it provides a better memory model over C. So applications like gaming engines, uh, native libraries for operating systems, file systems, um, and similar stuff. Okay, folks, that was it for this video. Uh, and actually, as far as this ranking is concerned, uh, it is absolutely based on my knowledge. Uh, and interestingly, in some form, I have written programs or softwares in all of these languages. Well, yes, in all of these languages. How interesting. So, um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, uh, hit that like button uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.